Hey everyone, it's Tim from Motion VFX, and today we have a lower thirds pack that's jam packed with several different styles for various use cases, including some cinematic titles. Some squeaky clean. Then these do some, 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 oh yeah, glitch. Also some retro lower thirds for those vintage vibes. And don't think I forgot about your social media needs. We've got those covered. And finally, tech. They're techie. So let's jump right into Resolve and take a look. So once you download mLowers Universal from mInstaller, you can go right up to your effects in Resolve. And under Toolbox, you're going to bring that drop down, down. Go to Titles, Motion VFX, and then scroll down to mLowers Universal. You can click on the box and you'll see all of the lower thirds it offers right off the bat. Or you can bring this drop down, down, and you can see each section individually. We have cinematic, clean, glitch, retro, social media, and tech, all offering different styles and different controls. So if we start with cinematic here, we can preview some of these, see what they look like. And so let's go ahead and bring this first one in here. I'm just going to throw this on top in the timeline. And if we play this back, we'll see we have the text pop up at the bottom. The cinematic ones are more clean fade-ins and they look really nice and fit with a lot of different types of footage, especially with opening long shots like we see here. And if we open up our inspector, we'll see some controls that we have, with the ability to change our header or regular title controls. I'm gonna bring this drop down here, see it all better. But for the cinematic ones in particular, what we're really interested in is a lot of the zoom effects that we have. We can increase the scale of it to have it scale a lot more during the playback. Or we can have it just be a very subtle zoom if we wanted to. And maybe we want to change the text color to better blend in with the background here. And playing this back, it's a really nice clean opening to the shot. Taking that one off, we'll go to the next shot and let's just pull in a different one here. This one in particular has an interesting blur effect that we can modify. So if we go into our blur controls here, we can modify the blur based on a fast noise. So the higher up we bring the scale, the more scattered the blur is going to appear. We can adjust the seethe as well to change where that blur is being applied. Or we could even have the blur animate if we wanted to by just right clicking that blur set in an expression, and then we'll just base it off of time divided by 10. And time is just a simple expression that means it's using the frame number that it's on. If I showed that in Fusion real quick, what that would look like here, we're on frame 79. If we did time divided by 10, that means it's going to equal 7.9. can continue to skim through that and you can see 120 equals 12 if you divide it by 10. Yay math! But this way the animation will blur and maybe that's a little bit too fast of an animation here so we can just increase that like so. And now we have a subtle blur animation here. But what's nice about this as well is if we don't want the blur we can just remove it as well. I particularly kind of like it so we're going to go ahead and turn it on and when you play it back this is what it looks like. So the cinematic ones are really fun to play with. Let's move on to the clean titles. And each one of these has a very simple animation but applies a very clean aesthetic to them as you can see here. So there's a couple of these I like in particular. Let's go ahead and bring Clean 02 in. And I'm just going to place it on this first clip over here. Shrink it down to the clip size. And let's just bring it over. And if we play it back it looks pretty good by itself. And what we'll notice right away is that this subtitle here actually acts as a mask over the rest of the content. We could even scale that up and see it a little bit easier here. And if we go under our subtitle controls, we can see that that subtitle is going over top of the other text. So if we wanted to make it a lot bigger, we could do so like this. Maybe let's move the content position up just a touch. And then we could bring the titles below it and go to the other title and bring it above it as well and maybe just have a little bit of crossover scale that up bring this up a little bit and scale it up as well but now it just adds a little bit of a different feel to it if we bring our titles down we have additional frame controls too so we can increase or decrease the frame width and height depending on what we want it to look like as well as the thickness of the border and the roundness if we wanted to just have it be a square or keep the round shape on the corners. This one can be a lot of fun for sure. And then the other one I'll show is the third one right here. I'll place it on this clip up ahead. And if we click and see what controls we have, we have these dot controls. We can control how many of the dots we want and how large they are. 
don't do this, as well as their spread if we wanted to span over the text and the color. So this is just a fun one because there's dots in it and who doesn't like dots, am I right? But there's so much to explore with these clean titles, like some that have nice clean character reveals or word reveals. These are just really nice lower thirds that you could literally put anywhere. But we're gonna remove these for now and we're gonna go on to the glitch titles. Now these are definitely more niche in some aspects, but also feature some really nice control as well. So let's go ahead and start with number seven here. Now what's great about this one is if you go into the inspector, you'll see we have arrow controls. So we can modify what this arrow looks like if we want it larger, deeper, or wider where we want it to go and how fast we want it to flicker as well if we want it flickering at all or we can just toggle that off and just keep it straight on but I kind of like it with it on and we also have distortion and prism controls so we can control what this looks like as it's fading in and how we want that RGB distortion to look how strong we want it and we can really have a fun time with what we want this to do and say I feel like this should be pointing at the storm up here like right there I'm not a meteorologist. And then the other one I want to look at is the number 10 one. Let's go ahead and bring that in here. Make sure that's the right size. And if we just preview this straight up, we see we have a number of things that are happening on this effect. So if we go ahead and just look and see what we're doing here, if we go into our frame controls, we see we have this width. We can determine how big and how thick we want those outer edges to be. And going into our effects controls, we have control over things like distortion, waviness, and the RGB's distortion as well. And these things occur somewhat at random too, so we can really just accentuate how distorted we want this to flicker, depending on what the use case is, or the frequency of how much it flickers and distorts as well. So this one gives you a lot of really simple and really good control. So a lot of these glitch lower thirds are just really good for having that little extra bit of control to control the mood of what you're looking to achieve, while also just looking very simple and aesthetically pleasing. And now we'll just glitch these out, I mean remove them, and we'll move on to the retros. Now previewing the retros, you can see that they give a lot of classical and artsy type feels so they're definitely a bit of a different aesthetic than the others are but one of my favorites in this particular part of the pack is number seven here i'm gonna throw this on to that and i particularly like this one because when you go down to your long shadow scale you can do the butching i'll even spell that one out butching I don't know if that's how that's actually spelled, but it looks cool. But this shadow can also be rotated around depending on if we wanted to almost have like a 3D type look like this, or we can just keep it at its original state here. And maybe we go into the color and make it look slightly more vintage here. Let's bring that, bring this down a bit. Just add a little bit of color, maybe desaturate a little more, and maybe move it a little more orangey. If somebody knows what sound effect I'm talking about, please leave a comment. Might even move it up. And let's actually make it a real title here. And probably remove the subtitle. And if we play that back, it gives a much more organic vintage vibe. And the other one I want to show is the star. I'm going to put it on this clip here at the beginning over here. Shrink it down. Now this one has a simple animation, has a star rollout, but we can actually control the aspects of the star as well. So if we go to our star controls in the inspector, we can adjust how many points the star has, or how pointy we want those star's edges to be. We can spin it, we can scale it, we can position it, we can color it. Somebody's probably going nuts that it's a seven point star. So I'm gonna make it eight and just to make you feel better and fix the angle. Oh, that feels so much better. I was actually giving myself OCD. But we can go into our title controls and scale that up. Maybe bring it down just a touch as well. And if we play that back, it gives a clean opening with the star spinning. And then it fades off at the end. So I really love these retro lower thirds because they can really set the tone for what kind of place we're looking at or what the feel for the piece is going to be. Really, really clean for vintage looks. So I'm going to retroactively delete these. Puns are getting better and better. We're going to go to social media. Now these ones are interesting because let's just go ahead and bring this first one here. I'm going to put it on the end clip. And what we'll notice is if we go into our logo controls, we actually have the ability to change which platform we're making this for. So if we select Facebook, we get the Facebook logo, Instagram. It's just really nice that we have the option to choose which platform that we want these lower thirds to be for. And it's just a really clean way to do it. And any of these that have a logo control will also have this background as well. So if we wanted to provide a background for some of these logos, that works as well. So it's not blending in with the background. Or we can add that platform's color into it as well. 
We even have the ability to add a custom image for these logos if we have a specific logo that we want to implement. So for example, let's say we wanted to throw the OBS logo in there. Let's just go ahead and add that in. And then we can just scale it accordingly. And speaking of custom images, the other one that we want to look at here is number 10. I'm we'll going to throw that on there. We see with this one, we have avatar controls. And this is basically a drop zone where we can do a similar thing. I'm just going to throw the OBS logo on there again. Just as an example to show that if our image is too big, we want to adjust the avatar inner scale so that it scales down accordingly. And then we can scale it back up if we need to so that it fits right in exactly where we want it. And then we can also go back to our logo controls. Let's say we wanted to go to Facebook and we can still adjust our logos as well. So the flexibility we have on the social media lower thirds is really nice to have. So let's go ahead and delete our account. I mean, delete the social media lower thirds and we'll go ahead to the tech bin. We'll scroll ahead here back to this clip here. And if we just look at some of these individually, we see we have a high variance of what these can do. And so the first one I want to show off is this number three here. And the nice thing is that we have control over exactly where we want this point to be. So if we go to our elements controls, we can change the angle at which this is facing and then how long that line is that we want it to stretch out. We also have some thickness control if we want to just make it really thin, completely disappear entirely, or just make it really thick. And we can toggle this rectangle if we just want the align only as well, or we can do vice versa. And the best way to move everything around is if we go to our content controls, we can move everything at once. Let's say we want this to be up here, and then we can bring this line down, and maybe we want it to be pointing at this little spot on the edge of the road. And if we play that back, we see we found our access point. What is it pointing to? I don't know. It looks like a sign. Maybe it's what stops the storm. Maybe it's a conspiracy. Or maybe it's just a really good looking lower third. And for the last one, I'm going to bring in number 11 down to here. And if we play this through, we have some text inside of a box scrolling through and the box is acting as a mask. So this could be like a weather report for this guy who's walking down a road with no end in sight. And if we go to our title controls, we actually have some scroll speed parameters. So let's go ahead and bring that to 60. And if we do that, that text will scroll a lot faster through once it pops on. This can be really nice if you have a lot of text in your title as well. And if we add more text, we could increase the frame width so that it's easier for us to get through all of the text at once and we can see it better. And if we play it back, we get a cool warning style pop up. And then just for fun, I'll show off one more here. This first one, I'm going to drag it in on the timeline delete that one there. And then if we scroll through this, we see we have jumbled text that's all over the place and then code verification finished. So, so maybe somebody's decoding something. Who knows what people are doing with this? So as you can see, we can change what's in this jumbled text. So maybe we we'll want to put something else in here. I'll go ahead and paste and hide it. And then maybe if somebody gets it right, you win a prize. Can anybody guess what it is? The variety of this pack makes it a ton of fun to play with, but also just easy to use for many different purposes. Let us know what you think of these down below. Check out this pack at motionvfx.com, and I'd love to hear how you use these lower thirds in your projects. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.